Good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made and what we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to each and every one of you once again to Kingdom Life Christian Center Sunday morning service. Glory to God. The Lord has blessed us and graced us with this gift call today. And we have determined in our mind that we are going to take this day and we're going to dedicate it to the Lord. We're going to come and we're going to give praise, adoration to our Lord, which is so due to his name because he's been good to us. He's been good to us, not just last week, not just last month, last year. He's been good to us all of our lives. We, he deserves our praise today. Come on in to the house of the Lord. This door is open at Kingdom Life Christian Center. We have an open door waiting for you to come on in to connect with us and we can come together as a corporate body and say we're going to offer up this corporate praise unto God. And that's what our prayer is today, that every single church that is open in the name of Jesus today, hallelujah, that all of our prayers globally are going up to worship our magnificent God and hallelujah. And as we are worshiping, as we are praising, as we're giving the word, then we are praying that men, women, boys, and girls who are listening uh, are provoked to come to the altar, give their lives to the Lord. Let the Lord have his way, people of God, in this service today. We know it's virtual, <clears throat> but how can you do that? Uh, by inviting him in to your space. I don't know where all of you guys are located. You could be in your living room. You could be in your basement. You could be outside in your backyard right now enjoying the nice weather, listening to me. Hallelujah. You could be in your car. You could be at your office. You could be even behind prison walls or, and you are listening to me. Whatever the space is, allow the Holy Spirit to come where you are. And if you do, I could tell you that space will never be the same. You will never be the same. Hallelujah. The Lord is always ready to meet us when we gather in ourselves together. Hallelujah. In his house. Glory be to God. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, what? Let us go into the house of the Lord. Why was he glad? Because he knew if he could go to the house of the Lord, he would feel the presence of God. Hallelujah. And in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. If you need some joy, you're in the right place right now. Glory be to God. So welcome to each and every one of you to Kingdom Life Christian Center Online Church connection via our YouTube channel. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe. To those of you who are here for the very first time, Pastor Betty want you to know that you are so welcome. And we are uh, convinced that what you receive here today is going to make you want to come back. And any time that you want to come by, visit Kingdom Life Christian Center, we want you to know you have a warm seat of welcome, yes, awaiting you right here in this sanctuary. Glory be to God. We are uh, we are determined, hallelujah, to give you the uncompromised, infallible word of God, hallelujah, that is able to save your soul. We want to give you what thus saith the Lord, hallelujah, and we're going to leave it up to you what you do with it. Glory be to God. But we are praying that it's going to convict you so much so. If you're saved and you in an area of weakness is going to uh, convict you to get strong, if you don't know the Lord, it's going to uh, compel you uh, to want to give your life to the Lord, etc. So welcome once again. We are in our series entitled "It's About the Brand," and we talked about we are talking about a brand uh, in regard to um, a natural illustration of market branding. And so many of you are familiar with branding. Uh, the reason I know, because all of us are consumers at some point. We uh, buy products or e we either solicit services. If you've done any of those and you bought something or you solicit a service, you did so, why? You didn't, you didn't. Even when you arbitrarily say, I don't know about this company, but you say, I heard about them. Why? Because they, their brand name and their brand identity has somewhere you've heard about it. Someone by word of mouth has have given you that recommendation or someone has given you the information Say, oh, if you want to buy this, if you want a good product, this is where you go. 
or just by you hearing through advertisements or whatever through marketing and through media, you've heard of what this product do. And you now know that many people buying it, they've been around for a long time. It has proven to be um, what they said it was going to be, uh, how it was going to perform. And so now you attach to that brand identity, if you will. And we've taken that natural illustration and we're bringing out a spiritual principle about the brand identity called the church. And we went over a lot of things so far. This is part six. So uh, some of you may be behind. So what we're going to have to ask you to do, because we got to get through this, because what I've been doing is keep spending time on the prior lessons. Go back. They're right there to listen to at your leisure and at your own pace. And we've gone over that so you can get caught up to what this is. But you can listen to this and get a whole uh, uh, set of instructions and good word from just this one. But we want you to go back because we build a foundation to, to getting to this point. So we encourage you to do that. Thank you, Kingdom Life Christian Center, to all my partners, well wish your supporters, <clears throat> to those of y'all who who members who ain't uh, formally got your name on the roll. I'm just waiting on you. I'm waiting on you to just say yes. The Lord told me that and I'm going to go ahead and obey. <laughs> I know it's going to happen right at the proper time. Pastor Betty got a lot of stuff that she got to do. So I'm calling you. I'm asking the Lord. I'm going to ask the Lord to put fire up under you. <laughs> Glory to God. But anyway, we are going to go right into our lesson. Let us pray real quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you as humbly as we know how we come to you knowing that it is an honor and a privilege to be able to call you Father. We thank you for your son, Jesus, that it pleased you to bruise him on our behalf. The one who knew no sin became sin for us so that we may be free. Thank you for allowing us, hallelujah, to be brought back into your right standing. Father, through the son, us uh, finished work on Calvary. Thank you, Jesus, that you were attentive to making sure that you pleased the Father, fulfilled your assignment. And when you were on that cross, you said it is finished because you knew you have done the work that the Lord called for, the Father God called you to do. And we are so thankful. We will never get tired of thanking God for sending you, Jesus. And for Jesus, we will never uh, be able to repay you. For all that you've done for us, we don't know the half of the price that you pay. We know in part and we see in part, but we know one thing that you paid an ultimate price that we may be free. Help us then now to let not your, your uh, dying be in vain for us. Help us to honor what you've done and, and recognize, hallelujah, uh, the uh, depth of what you've done for us. Glory be to God. Through the person of the Holy Spirit, who is the tri part of the triune God, I praise God for you. Thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That is not living on the outside of us, but is now on the inside of us. He is here to continue on what Jesus has started. Glory be to God to give that, us that power, to give us that authority here in this earth that Jesus left us with when he gave us his name. Hallelujah. Made us heirs and joint heirs, covered us with his blood. Now the Holy Spirit that the that you, Father, sent here on behalf of Jesus now is still here to assist us, to be our paracletus, our standby, our helper, and our assistant to get us to our destined places. We thank you. Your love is so deep, so wide, and so high that we can't even phantom it. We can only embrace it at a certain level. I will spend a lifetime, God, trying to Thank you for all that you've done. You thought about me, hallelujah, even before I was formed. I existed in the heavenly realm, hallelujah, and you set me apart. You didn't let me be confused. You didn't let me be in this earth as one whose heart is hardened toward you, who uh, is, a, is a fool, who says there is no God. You allow me to be born, hallelujah, in the family, hallelujah, that I was born in. You allow me, hallelujah, to be stored by the mother that was proper for me to get me to this point because you had a specific call on our life. That's just how 
intricate of details that you are, Father, regarding our life. And I am thankful. Hallelujah. And the only thing I can do, Lord, is present to you my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, which is only my reasonable service. So, Father, we just give you honor and glory for being the sovereign Lord, the holy Lord, the God of mercy, the God of peace. Hallelujah. Jehovah Shalom. Hallelujah. We thank you. Jehovah Nisi, our victory banner. Hallelujah. Jehovah Rapha. Hallelujah. Who is our healer. Jehovah Jireh, who is our provider to be Elohim, the creator, the possessor of all things. God, we just so thank you, Father God. Now we thank you for the Holy Spirit. And now, Holy Spirit, I'm calling on you today. Hallelujah. You are the special guest in this house every single time that we meet. Now do what you do best. Hallelujah. Somebody need deliverance today. You're here to deliver them. Somebody need healing, both physically, mentally, and emotionally. Heal today. Somebody, hallelujah, need you to be a mind regulator. We speak the mind of Christ over you right now. You will not lose your mind. We speak Speak, hallelujah, Holy Spirit, that you will go as I'm, I'm decreeing this word, that you are touching them right now. Hallelujah. Mind be healed. Have the mind of Christ. Believer, get on, put on the mind of Christ. Put on the helmet of salvation right now in the name of the Lord Jesus, casting down those imaginations of your, your doom, your fatality, what the enemy is trying to make you see. Hallelujah. You are powerful in Jesus' name. Now, Holy Spirit, go and do that. Set the captives free. Hallelujah. Open up the eyes of the blind. Open up the doors to those who are in prison. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We thank you for doing it now. Holy Spirit, be in this service. Let the demonstrations of your spirit follow this word that I have prepared for them, this word that is preached. Hallelujah. Don't let them just be hearers, but let them be doers of this word so that the things of God can now begin that is long overdue to be manifested in our lives for the sense of urgency. Hallelujah. For the time is soon to come of the return of our Christ, and we've got much work to do. Now, we thank you, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on this flesh of mine. I sit down in my flesh, stand up strong in me in the spirit, think through my mind and speak through my lips. So this word of God, it will come forth unhindered, unchecked by demonic forces and by any spirit of interruption. This I pray and this I believe, fall afresh and let the the demonstration of what I'm preaching, follow what I'm preaching so that testimonies will come in that they were delivered through the life-giving word. We thank you for doing it. It is so, and so it is in Jesus' name. If you agree with me, come on and say amen and amen. Again, we are in part six. Uh, talk about, it's about the brand talking about brand identity. Last week, we promised that we would continue uh, with where we left off with 1 Peter 2 and 9 um, and those four different categories that the church was specifically uh, called to be in this earth. We said then we were going to move on and talk about the church brand as an uh, ambassador. And then if we had time, we would spend time on talking about about uh, the church um, as being uh, soldiers, glory be to God. So we'll see how far we're going to get. Thank you, Lord. So uh, 1 Peter 2 and 9, 1 Peter 2 and 9. Let me get my Bible out. Glory to God, hallelujah. Hope you all are having a blessed Sunday so far. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Anything made you mad before you came <laughs> to this service? Put it aside so you won't be distracted and you can hear what Pastor Betty is saying. <laughs> Glory to God. I just love you all. It says, but you are a chosen generation, generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, 
that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. This is a scripture that sums up the church. This is our brand identity, if you will. That's what, this is the scripture that I was drawn to when I was talking about the brand identity. We've given you many things that we identify with that uh, denotes the, the brand of the church. But in a nutshell, it comes down to the scripture. This is what how God sees us operating, not later, not in eternity, but here right now in this earth. This is who he has created the church to be. Hallelujah. And we are powerful in our right. And stop disqualifying yourself. We are more powerful, armed, dangerous than we are uh, believing. And we got to stop laying down and just giving up at the first sign of trouble, pain, uh, disappointment, mistrust, and you name it. It ain't God doing that to you. And some of the things we're going through, you all, we're going to go through some things. It's for our pruning. It's for our growth. It's for us to mature. It's for your experience to where God is about to take you. Take my word for it. Many things right now is only being revealed to me of why I had to go through that years ago. Because if I had not went through that, Pastor Betty would be the, the type of preacher I am today. Glory be to God. If I had not experienced anything, I can't tell you nothing. So it is not for your evil, according to Jeremiah 29, 11. The thoughts, the plans, everything is not for your evil, said the Lord, but of your good to get you to what? Your expected end, that attack of the enemy. He's not going to let it kill you. The attack is supposed to be to show you your weak points are you is to show whether you have the full armor of God on. It shows you how dirty he is so that you can get more tenacious in your spirit about being or uh, being equipped is to show you that you are more powerful with God and to prove to you you're powerful, that you're an overcomer. How are you going to be an overcomer if you don't fight nothing, if you don't overcome anything? How are you going to be a victor if you don't ha never have a battle? You understand we want those titles, but it's got it's something that's attached to that in order for you to be able to name that title. Glory be to God. We always want to say, hey, we're a victor. We, we got victory in Jesus Christ. Victory over what if you don't fight nothing? So if Jesus went through, if he was the target of the enemy, if the devil uh, messed with him, he's going to mess with you. Ain't got nothing to do with nothing you did. Ain't got nothing to do with God ain't caring about you. It's got to do that you enlisted in this army and part of it is going through boot camp. Part of it is, is uh, dealing with the other op uh, 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 opposite side, your enemy, your opponent. Hallelujah. When they go out there and play those sports and they lose, they go back. What do they do? They don't give up, say, I'm not going to play anymore. They say we need to do better on defense or we need to do better with, with teamwork or whatever. They come back and they strategize to say we're not failures. That means we just didn't win this time, but we got to now go back to the drawing board, to the, to the table and say, where can we do better? And with your tests and trials, they come in to make you strong, not to destroy you. Oh, glory be to God. So he says, we are these things. We are armed and dangerous. And I believe that's part of the problem that we have not seen ourselves like the Lord sees us. We haven't seen ourselves as a covenant rights. We haven't seen ourselves as a nation. We can't even see ourselves in, right individually. No, no more than seeing ourselves as chosen. Hallelujah. Because you have been dealing with the spirit of rejection that's been on me lately this is a side note you've been on me lately about uh the spirit of rejection and i'm going to I, i'm doing audio prayers you all go out there on my youtube channel and, and listen to those audio prayers that the holy spirit has given me and that's one area because i feel a lot of you are out there and you're trying to prove yourself you spend spending time trying to change yourself change your hair color change your weight change your skin color all kinds of stuff that you're trying, I'm not saying you don't improve yourself, but you're doing it to try to fit in somewhere, to try to feel like you belong somewhere and you are not comfortable with you. 
Glory be to God. But you got to understand who you are. But anyway, so this scripture as our brand identity, we are a chosen race. And what did that chosen race mean? Uh, a, a race is just a group of people who have things in common. It is a, a type, a class, or a specific breed that exists at the same time having many sim similarities or developed from a common model or ancestor. And we know as believers, we all come from the same father. Hallelujah, glory be to God. We have the same thing in common. And therefore, God has chosen us. What that means, he's handpicked you. Glory be to God. Many are called, but few are chosen. And if you are one of his today, you are chosen by God. Hallelujah. And one scripture in, uh, I think it's in 1 Timothy, you have not chosen me, but I've chosen you. Now, since he's chosen you, go, child of God, and do what he's called for you to do. Hallelujah. He will not give you an assignment. He will not give you a vision. He will not give you a purpose and then know that you won't be able to fulfill it. Whatever he's called you to do, and you know for a fact that that's what he called you to do, you have what it takes to do it. But you've been disqualifying yourself because you haven't seen yourself right. You haven't uh, play, played a part of the brand identity. You've taken the the back row, you taken the lower seat, you taken the silent mode, or I don't want to be seen type of deal. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about in that arrogant way, because we ain't supposed to be trying to be seen that way. But I'm talking about, oh, I don't want nobody. No, stand up and be who you want to be. Know your worth and know your value. That's what I'm saying. So as the brand identity, as the body of Christ, as members in particular, According to Corinthians, we all have a specific part. So he's telling us right here, number one, you are a hand-picked generation or a chosen generation. Next thing he says in this scripture, you are what? A royal priesthood. What is a priesthood? A priesthood is where, where someone who goes before God for the people. It is a person that is ordained to offer the sacrament or pastoral office, a member of the clergy or a minister, they go before God to offer up the sacrifice for the sins. We know back in the day before Jesus and all that, the way that uh, people uh, would be atoned for their sins, they would go before the priest, the animal had to be sacrificed, the king, had, I mean, the priest had to be clean, go in the holy holies. He had to lay his hand on the scapegoat, release it into the wilderness so the sins of people be forgiven. That model didn't work. Man still had consciousness of dead work. There had to be something better. And the Lord said, I need something better that man once and for all uh, can be uh, delivered from the consciousness of dead works, that they once and for all can be forgiven and atoned for their sins by one uh, sacrifice and he looked to try to find where that sacrifice was and he couldn't find it and he looked bam there's his son he's worthy enough and that's why he couldn't come here in his his deity he had to come here as the son of man put on human flesh like you and I he can relate to all that we relate to in the human era so everything you've been no nobody understand Nobody understand what I'm going to. Nobody has been through what I'm been through. If the devil telling you that you're lying. There's no original thought. There's no original thing that you unique to. Hallelujah. Jesus was in all points tempted like we were. He know what it feels like to be in the flesh. He knows what it feels like to be attacked. He knows what it feels like to have pain. He knows what it feels like to be ostracized. He knows what it feels like to be uh, uh, abandoned. He knows what it feels like to be uh, uh, betrayed by your best friend. He knows all of that. And so he, he, bear, he went through it and he told us that we got the same power in us. But anyway, so you are a royal priesthood. And look at that word royal. You're not just a priest, but you are a royal priest. What do that mean? You have been a priest that has been given the assignment to the king. So you are the priest of the king. So you are a priestly king. Jesus is the high priest. 
But we are in this earth, the royal priesthood. We are acting on behalf of our king, going to him on behalf of those who don't know how to go to him, going to the priest and offering up prayer, intercession, and coverings for those who don't know how, from our family all the way to ones, to people we don't know, to the sinner who can't go before God or know how to. We go to God in prayer on behalf of these people. And we that's the reason we exist. That's why I'm talking about all of this. The church brand is in this earth, not for ourselves. We got it now. We are here now to draw all of those who are still bound, all of those who are still groping in darkness. The church is here for that. The church is a very great brand. It's a strong brand. It's a trusted brand. But we've been saying we gave the correction to this company called the church because we we needed some correction. We haven't done some things right. It takes a humble person and a humble group to say we have not done things quite so right. But now let's not just beat ourselves up with condemnation, but let us come and come to uh, the table and let us come with one accord and one mind and see where we can uh, uh, do repair to this reputation and influence that we've lost in the earth. By many means, I'm not going to list everything. I miss mentioned some in other parts. I'm not going to mention everything here. But some influential leaders in prominent positions have failed. People that people trust, prayed for them, church mothers, missionaries, deacons, and missionaries, and just simple lay members, failed people. And now the church has a, a taint on Trying to, the devil trying to taint our brain. It never will. The church is the most powerful institution that ever will exist in this earth. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. But because we are the most powerful, you can take the most powerful thing that exists now and it's still got work needs to be done. Because as long as we're here, the work needs to be done. The church is a powerful brand, but there's work need to be done. And we took care of that in the first part. Now we've tried to show you, we've been to the boardroom table. We have uh, assess that there needs to be time for approval. We have said, okay, the, the board executives, the board assists, I consider the board, I use my own analogy. The board to me consists of the spiritual leaders, the five-fold ministry, pastor, apostle, a prophet, evangelist, the uh, uh, teachers. Hallelujah, all for the work of the ministry, for the perfecting of the saints. We all got to come together as one voice, teaching the same thing, not going here, this will teach this, that, that will teach that. That's why we got so many denominations. It's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father, and only one way to Jesus. It's one holy living. That's what it's about. I don't care what you name your church. I don't care what denomination you give it. If you're not following the word of God, you're not following the oracles of God. If you're not in alignment with what he says and you're trying to say something different, you are not of his. But if you are of his and and, and you believe in this word to be the infallible uh, word of God, the uncompromised word of God, and the final authority, what he says goes God would be true and every man a liar. If you don't be, if you believe that Jesus Christ, hallelujah, is the Son of God, He died for people's sins, and He's the only way to the Father. And if you accept Jesus as His Son and you accept His Word, the full gospel of the Word, then I don't care about what you're calling yourself. Hallelujah. You're identified with yourself, right? Glory be to God, because certain, as we said, brand, you, you attach yourself to a brand. You're attaching yourself to everything they, they believe. So we just can't attach ourselves to things that is not in alignment to the word. And if, if that that religion or or sect or group that you attach to is not in the word of God, hallelujah, you better come out and attach to a brand that represents what God put in place. Hallelujah. So, so that we are a royal priesthood, we are going up to God on behalf of the people and we got to get it together so we could do that more profoundly as a global body than we can individually what we got now. My church, your church, oh, these my members, your members. Can't even get members of other churches when they, when they come together and find other Christian believers to join together on any cause because it ain't they 
church members or they church group. What that? What's that about? You part of the body ain't people who so gifted and all they gift is for is just for their local body. God didn't gift you to just sit in your local church. Come on, y'all. That's why so many y'all sitting in there fighting over positions and seats. But the world is your audience and there's work to do out there. And there's other uh, works and groups and organization for you to let your gift be used. But you think and you have let uh, and let your leader tell you that your gift was only for their uh, for their that body. I've been I was I raised was raised that way and missed out on a lot of things because they they were intimidated by us going. Why? Because they thought we we're gonna hear something. Hallelujah. And thought you can't be talking about they steal members. People can't steal members. People go where they want to go. Hallelujah. But anyway, that was a side nugget. Then next we are a holy nation. A nation is a large body of people associated with a particular territory that is sufficiently conscious of its unity to seek or to possess a governmental, uh, a government, particularly its own. It is the territory or country itself, an aggregation of persons of the same ethnic family, often speaking the same language. And in this body, brand, the, this holy nation called the church, we all should speak the same language. See, I just said that. What is the language? The language of the kingdom? What is the, what is the nation? What's, when he said we are a holy nation, what, what nation? We are a nation of people. Our ethnicity is that we got, we are God's people and we are the territory that we uh, possess is the territory of the kingdom of God here in this earth. We are a holy nation. We are a whole set aside ethnic group identifying with one another. Hallelujah. Holy meaning we are dedicated, consecrated, and we are separated for the master's purposes only. And we represent the government from which we came from, which we're going to talk about in a bit when we're talking about ambassadors. And that is the government of the kingdom of God. Do you know the kingdom of God is a government? The government shall be upon his shoulders. Come on, prophesy in Isaiah about Jesus. He was going to carry the burden of the government on his shoulder. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay, and then next we are procure your people. Uh, a peculiar people mean those people who are uncommon, unusual, distinctive. It's a form of type or class of objects existing at the same time and having many similarities developed from a common model or ancestor. You see that? We all come from the same father. <laughs> those who are baptized, born again, again Jesus, Jesus, uh, uh, Made us an heir of God. That's our Father. We we share in Him. We share. We've been adopted into this royal family. The Lord uh, Jesus. Jesus was uh, His only begotten. But then when He died and brought us into the right standing of God by those who accept Him, now it says He become uh, have many brethren. He made us joint heir with Him. He was the only heir. Now we share in his heritage right along with him. He ain't saying, Father, why is that so? No, it's a pleasure for the for Jesus to have made us an heir of God. <laughs> That's what he did. So we are a peculiar people. And when you hear that word peculiar, the first thing come to mind is queer, strange, and weird. You know what? But in a sense, we are that too. We should be to the world. Oh, those Christian folks are so queer. It don't have to be bad, though. We're supposed to don't make sense to them. We're supposed to be queer. And like, what is to them? But but we're so busy trying to conform, look like them, dress like them, act like them, be like them, have the same character and, and temperament that they have. Uh, we ain't been called to that. We are a peculiar people, an uncommon people, an unusual person. We are distinctive people. Hallelujah. 
and we are the nature. I, we have different nature in our character. Hallelujah. We are in what I always say. We are in what kind of class? We're in the God class. Aren't you glad about it? Everybody's not part of this God class. Now, if you want to try to uh, uh, be in any type of group and class, you better try to be in the God class because can't nothing beat that. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So this is our branding, people of God. Meditate on this scripture so that you can know who God called you to be so that we can start walking this thing out, knowing that this has been our mandate and it would please the Father for us to act like this. And it's not just about you, your anointing, your gift, your talent, your ability. Hallelujah. Those are your brand identities unique to yourself that God given you. But those things are instrumental in the kingdom of God and your anointing, your vocation. It's not about you and just your family. It's not about you just in your church. It's not about you, just you and, and your closest friend. It's about you and the world. You've been called to the world, people of God. Hallelujah. So that's what we are as uh, our, our identity that's been given to us straight from heaven. Hallelujah. Do y'all want to take on to that identity? Some people don't own up to their identity. They try to mask. I don't want to be part of that identity because this is what comes with it. Well, I'd rather take what comes with it. Hallelujah. Knowing that I'll be victorious and that I'll be instrumental in, in getting people to uh, um, even save people's lives. Glory be to God. And that this thing will give me the ticket to heaven and to all eternity. I will take, I will take that. Count it all joy. When you fall into direct temptation, because in this world you're gonna have tribulations. Hollywood people say, "I don't want to be sick. Y'all go through too much. Oh, that's just way too much. I, I can't have fun. I can't do tribulations and all that kind of stuff." Well, you're gonna have it in the world with God or without God. Which is the better choice? If you are stuck in a situation, would you rather be on a boat with a life vest or without one? <laughs> and this sinking, you you would rather be be covered right you would rather have the life best so i'm saying would you rather just live in this world you go both people christians we go through stuff just like y'all do we feel pain we get attacked we we know what it feels like to cry we know what it feels like to lose stuff we know what it feels like to be betrayed just like jesus just like y'all but we've got the help on our side. We in the God class. We know who to call on. We say, Holy Spirit, I'm not able to take this in my natural anymore. This is way too much. And what did the Lord do? Let the Holy Spirit minister to you. He either is going to tell you, yes, you can. You just think you don't keep on persevering, go through. But then when you get to the point, he really knows you cannot bear it. The scripture says that the Lord will not put no more on you than you are able to bear but he will, with every single temptation, make a way for you to escape it. Hallelujah. So if you're still in that test and you're still dealing with that temptation and you love God, that means God has confidence in you and he knows that you are able to handle it all the way through the end. Because if you was not here, lift it off of you. That's just how much he loves you. And when you come out, you won't come out shiny. They said gold, when we look at gold, I don't think I have my gold on today. But gold, true gold, what we look at and how it's sparkling and shining, it doesn't start like that. Diamonds don't start off looking sparkly like that. They are covered in, in this coating. Uh, gold has to be, they said, melted. To, to melt out all those impurities that covers that gold. Then it gets down to the shiny stuff. You know, the, the diamond has to be buffed and 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 get all of the, I, I don't even know the technical term for it, the rock and the stone that is uh, around it. It has to be buffed out to, for that thing to shine. And you, you are a diamond, you are precious. And that means that you're going to have be buffeted. You're going to be uh, tested and tried. 
But the Lord said, you're strong enough to do it because you are overcomer. That's what he said. I am more than an overcomer through who? Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So anyway, going on to our next section. And then I think I may end with this. We're talking about another branding, another brand identity of the church is that you are ambassadors of Christ. And that is found in 2 Corinthians 5 and 20. 2 Corinthians 5 and 20. And we're going to go and read that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 2 Corinthians 5 and 20. You see how God looks at you? So take off those crazy lenses you got on that making you see yourself less than um what God less than what God has said that you are. All these unworthy people walking around. I'm telling you, I had I had to be delivered from that because I would walk around, oh, I'm not worthy, Lord, you know. Oh, thank you for this and just just crying. Oh Lord, please, I want to be used by you and all that. Just a sense of unworthiness. Some people get arrogance in that, but you you don't have to be arrogant, but you got to stand up boldly in what he's called you to do and know that you are capable. Hallelujah. He wants you to say, stop all that crying. I told you who you are now. Get up. War good warfare. Put on the whole arm of God. You'll be able to stand it. You'll be able to stand against every wild, every fury daughter of the devil. Get up. Stop all that whining about but whoa, 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 it's me. I wish I was just as strong as sister so-and-so. I wish I was just an, as anointed as so-and-so. If you're a babe, wait on it. You, wait on your maturity. It's coming. And you ain't got to wish it. You are already anointed, but you just got to develop it. You already got faith. You just got to develop it. Hallelujah. Just keep on looking at everybody else, comparing. Hallelujah. Thinking that's dangerous, comparing yourself with selves. The Bible said them comparing themselves by themselves is not wise. And you compare your life with other people, you never you either feel uh, too high above other people or you feel yourself too low. Identify with Christ and you'll be all right. Hallelujah. So then he said that you are ambassadors. And then I said 2 Corinthians 5 and 20. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. And then I'm going to read 21. For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we may be made the righteousness of God in him. And I remember I just alluded to that scripture, but I wanted to bring that out. But look at this. It says that we are Christ's ambassadors. God making his appeal as it were through us. Uh, we as Christ's personal representatives. Lay hold of divine favor now offered us, and, and we are to be reconciled to God. So I want to spend time on that word ambassadors, because that's a branding for you as being God's child. Where you are, it says we are ambassadors, and we are ambassadors here in this natural earth. And the government that I said earlier that we represent is the government of the kingdom of God the most powerful government. There's nobody who can say no to it, okay? So the government, this is, you are an authorized messenger or representative. A, an ambassador is a diplomatic uh, official of the highest rank sent by one sovereign or state to another as its resident representative. So let's put, that's the natural definition of the word ambassador. So now let's put some pieces and some words in its place so that we can really, really, truly understand it. So it says that you are an authorized messenger. Then he tell us that we are witnesses, his disciples, he said, you are the ones that need to go out into the world, preach the gospel to the utmost parts of the earth, compelling men and women to be saved. And so we, when we are saved, you may not have a title. You may not be in the fivefold office, 
But every believer is a messenger. I believe every believer is a minister because what a minister is just simply a glorified name for a servant. When Jesus said, if you want the when they wanted to be great, the mother wanted one of their, their children to be sitting at God's right, right hand, one at the left hand. He said, that's not mine to give. He said, if they want to be great, let him that be greatest be servant of all. And so Jesus showed that example in the upper room when he, he um, served his disciples for the last time by humbling, kneeling, and washing their feet. Peter didn't want to be so, oh, no, Lord, you shall not wash my feet. That's why I'm talking about that sense of unworthiness. It could get out of whack. He, he didn't want, oh, Lord, I'm not worthy for you to wash my feet. But the Lord said, if you won't let me wash your feet, you shall have no part with me. Because why? Well, the Lord was trying to put a principle, a kingdom principle into play. That if you really want to be great in the kingdom, I'm going to command you, disciple, to 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 make sure that you're a servant. If you serve my people, if you feed my sheep, if you feed my lamb, Peter, that's how you're going to be great. And so many people put that title of minister. We all are ministers. You're supposed to be serving the people that God puts in your um, inner, your, I don't want to say insert, in your um, circle of life. Wherever you find yourself is if every believer affects the circle that they are in on a daily basis, I believe we can get more people to the Lord. Because so you're supposed to shine where God sends you through your out your daily life. On your job, that's your circle. In your home, that's your so circle. When you out, wherever you're going to transact business or or go to enjoy yourself. All those places, we shouldn't forget that we're Christians because we ain't in the church. We've got to remember that you are Christian everywhere you go. You are his representative everywhere you go. And we got to affect everywhere we go. We should be looking for opportunities. Say, Lord, what opportunity today is there for me to snatch some soul out of the hands of the enemy? Huh? Glory to God. So we are ambassadors, glory be to God, and we have been sent, given the highest rank, hallelujah, by one sovereign, and we know who is sovereign, the sovereign Lord, and no one, no one can take um, ownership of that title except God himself. God is the only one who is sovereign. What, what does sovereign mean? means he needs nothing to abide in for its existence. He is what he is all by himself. He is supreme ruler. We all um, fish need water to survive. Uh, animals and humans need air to breathe for our existence. We have to abide in something for our existence, not God. Mm-mm. He is the only sovereign Lord. So we are his ambassador. Oh, that makes me happy. Ah, it makes me happy to know that I am his authorized messengers of the highest rank. Come on, somebody. A, a diplomatic official of heaven. Hallelujah. To send to represent him. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit about an ambassador. Um, naturally speaking. So an ambassador, as we said, uh, is a high position. It is based, uh, is a head of a mission who is accredited to receiving the country's head of state. The head, they had a diplomatic mission known as an embassy, headquarters, in a chancery, usually in the receiving state's capital. So usually ambassadors are usually those that are representatives of their government in a foreign land. Okay, keep that in mind. What authority does an ambassador have? The ambassador has the authority of directing and coordinating all 
I'm gonna say all, all executive branch offices and personnel, except for those under the command of a U.S. area military commander or under another chief of mission. But usually they have all executive um, abilities to direct and to coordinate uh, personnel over there that is also serving on behalf of their country. So there are the highest ones. And all of those other ones, consulates, has to listen to the ambassador. And what is the key role of an ambassador? The key role of an ambassador is to coordinate the activities, not only of the foreign service officers and staff serving under him, but also representatives of other U.S. agencies uh, in the country. So you see, they have a very key role to coordinate things, to coordinate the activities. They are also the highest ranking who has other people of high rank underneath them. You see what I'm saying? What is expected of an ambassador? As, a, as an ambassador, uh, you represent the country from which you come. You're not there on your own assignment. You're not there on your own accord. You are specifically there to represent the government or the country that sent you there. And then they've given you that high ranking role. Hallelujah, that um, you operate and represent them in the way that they sent you there to represent, not having your own agenda. Here's another point about ambassadors. Ambassadors, they do not, although they're in that foreign land, they do not get involved with the affairs, military affairs, and all those things of that country. They're there for a specific reason to, to be an intermediary in the way that the government that sent them uh, plans for them to operate in. Hallelujah. So as the ambassador, um, you are the president's highest ranking a representative to a Pacific nation or international organization that is abroad. You are an effective ambassador uh, when you are strong, a strong leader, a good manager, a resilient negotiator, and a respected representative of the state that you come from. You see that? That's just on the natural sense. So how do we think we could just walk any kind of way and then talk about we represent Jesus? And, and being a stumbling block. The Psalms 1 said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor the one who don't stand in the way of sinners. They used to say in the church when I was going for up, uh, when I was growing up, they used to say in the church, walking slew foot. I, I just said, what is slew foot? They mean? <laughs> I still don't know what that means, but meaning they're not walking right. They, if this is the expectation of a natural government and what they expect from their ambassadors. Why are we walking uncircumspectly? Why are we not walking according to the market orders that the Lord gave us? Why are we not being that salt that he told us we're supposed to be as I uh, discussed in part number five? Why are we not being the light that he told us we're supposed to be not hid, not dim, but we're supposed to be up on that hill as the lighthouse with our light illuminating so bright that no matter what the darkest storm is out there on the sea of life, for those who are groping in darkness and trying to figure out, how do I get out of this darkness? What is the way out of this captivity? And then they see one little, they say a lighthouse beams shine all the way for miles and miles away. That's just how powerful the illumination of light is. That's why you are that light. It pierced through, as we said in a couple of lessons back, it pierced through the darkest of the dark. Even a match makes darkness flee. The light of a match makes darkness flee. And so what am I saying? We are supposed to be that lighthouse on the hill, sending out that ray to say, this is the way safe, safely home. 
follow the light and you will be saved. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So you see how we are to be this representation, these ambassadors in the earth. Glory be to God. We are the only ones he got to use to do kingdom business. Who else is he going to use you all if he's not going to use the church? He can't use anything else. Here are some different types of ambassadorships. Um, what do they call ambassadors? There are some that is called plenty potentiary, which is a person, usually a diplomatic agent invested with underlying that full power or authority to transact business on behalf of another. So there are, even though we talk about being ambassadors, there are different levels of that. And that's why we say even Christian believers, some people want to come into church and run. Oh, God called me to preach. And you ain't even got saved good yet. You don't even know. You're still a novice. So you, even though you are an ambassador and here's a representative, you still, in, you guys, levels of ambassadorship, if you will. And so that's what we we're going in. And he, that's why he say a place each of you in the body, such as please me, different gifts, different uh, operation, different uh, uh, administrations of the gift, but the same spirit. And then he said that the some of them are lesser parts to keep the other ones that have, that exalted more higher in balance. So we are all important, but each person don't operate the same level because we don't come in at the same level. Everyone is not a leader. Everyone is not called there. So you are an ambassador, but you got ambassador ranks, if you will. So the, amb the ambassador is a person who has full power and authority. They are the highest rank. And they are the ones who transact the business. The ambassador... Ambassador Extraordinary is a diplomatic minister in the highest rank, a sent on a special mission. So then you got those ambassadors, they're ministers. They don't have the full authority, but they just got specific assignments sent on a specific mission to do that, and they're done. Then there are those ambassadors at large which are ambassadors with special duties, okay? And um, they are uh, there on behalf of the government, but they just have a, some special duties to do. They're not on a mission, just some special jobs that the government wants them to do. So these are the different types of, uh, or rankings, if you will, of ambassadors, all of them being important, all of them having the specific role that they're supposed to play and the Lord knows what you're capable of and at what level of maturity you are. Although you are an ambassador, all are not at the same level, same way with faith, the same way with uh, uh, maturity and all of that. Amen. But all I want you to know that you represent him. You come from the government of God. The kingdom of God is a government and it reigns and it rules and it has its laws. And now he's sending you as his representative out in this big old hostile world, if you will, who do not want to deal with Christians. He's sending you as ambassadors out there. You have different diplomatic immunity. Did you know that? Meaning that um, that foreign country can't do anything uh, to you. Not only do you have immunity, your whole family does. That's just one of the, the uh, benefits of being an ambassador. Hallelujah, glory be to God. Are ambassadors above the law? According to the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations, uh, which most countries have ratified, offers diplomats acting in official of a state almost total protection from subjection to criminal, administrative, and civil laws belonging to the country in which the diplomat mission is located. So in other words, while you over in that foreign country, as a representative of your, of your government, 
you are not subject, you have Im uh, immunity and your family to any laws in the foreign country where you exist. This is saying so much. I hope I can dissect this properly. Holy Spirit, help me. We are in the world, but not of the world. I've been saying through this series. We are here as humans. We're supposed to obey the laws of the land. But in the spirit realm, we have diplomatic immunity, all who are in the family of God. That when God sends us somewhere, if he opens the doors for us to go in, ain't nobody nowhere bigger or bad enough to contend with God, to box with God, or to say no. Because when he opens the door, he says nobody can close it. If he closes it, then nobody can open it. So when we are on our gospel assignment and God says, this is what I want you to do, and you look at all of these things, well, this is not going to allow me to do this, this, and that. If you are acting as his ambassadors, he will open the door up for you and let you walk on in. When you are on foreign ground and the devil don't want you to be there because of what you're about to deliver, he wants to keep you out, put you under arrest. He wants to throw you into the prisons from, for the sake of the gospel. He won't be able to because of that one fact of your dip, you have a immunity as his ambassador here in this earth. Y'all understand what I'm saying? That's deep. I'm not going to go any further than that just to know when you are acting on God's behalf, there's doors that is closed that they say is going to be closed in your face. God will swing them open. And that's why we said we speak to nations. Be open. We speak to nations. Fall on your knee. We speak to nations. The kingdom of God is coming to your way. Are you going to accept it? But when the Lord over these regions and realms, these people in leadership who thinks that they almost are equivalent to God and nobody can do nothing with them, have people that is scared underneath them, prohibiting God's people from serving him. They have their time. When God is ready to blow, he will show who is God. When he wants to open the door of the gospel being preached, there will be a way for it to be preached. Do y'all hear what I'm saying to you? It may not be easy, but it is possible. We don't need easy. All we need to know God as your ambassador, is it possible for us? And if he leads you, he will make sure that he backs you up. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So there was a lot on ambassador. And I want to give you a few scriptures here. Hallelujah. I want us to know who we are. Mm -mm -mm. I want you to know without a shadow of a doubt of who you are. Mark 6, 7, and 9. And he called unto them, the 12, and he began to send them forth by two and two and gave them power over unclean spirits. You see that? So now Jesus, um, in this specific scripture, he was doing the miracles. He was going about healing people, doing all these. You can read for your reference uh, verses 7 through 9, Mark 6, 7 through 9 uh, in context. But specifically in this scripture, so what Jesus was doing, he was going around and he was still doing what he does about his father's business, healing the sick and all of that. He got to the point where, let me read it. Let me Let's read it one. And he went out from thence and came into his own country and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence has this man these things? And what wisdom is this which he is given unto him that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? You see that? He was doing mighty works. Is not this the carpenter's son of, of Mary, the brother of James and Joes? And of Judah and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. And he could there do no mighty work. Underline that. In that specific place, 
he could do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands on a few sick folk and healed them. It was only a few people that was able to be a recipient of the healing that was a Available to them, but the Lord could not do it because they did not embrace and accept him. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went around about the villages teaching. So he stopped the miracle. He stopped healing. And what did he resort to? Just go ahead and teach. Since they, they're not able to receive, push past, and they are so such unbelief, I'm just going to teach them. And he then, after he began to teach, he says, now I'm passing this torch on to my 12. Verse 7, and he called unto him the 12 and began to send them forth by two and two and gave them power over unclean spirit. So in other words, what did he do? He imparted and transferred into them the ability and the power and authority to now go do the works abroad. And then he gave them the power over every single unclean spirit and look at verse eight and commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey save a staff only no script no bread no money in their purses but be shod with sandals and not put on two coats so it was like he was sending them out stripped almost of nothing just go all you take with you, the staff that's in your hand as they walk, and you know that thing assisted them when and walking long distance. So he only told them to take a staff that was in their hand. They were to take no money with them. They was not to take a script. What is a script? Written, written, what they were, I believe what they were going to say or written, written documentations of instructions they were going to give. He didn't want them to take no script with them, nothing prepared, no money. Wow, just a staff, Lord, in my hand. You could put shoes on your feet, but you can't take even two coats. Just take one suit of clothing. What was he trying to do, I believe? He was saying, I'm sending you out on kingdom business. And I have empowered you to do what I call for you to do. I don't want you to rely on nothing natural. To think that that's getting you through. I am going to provide for you everything you need. I'm going to provide for you when you need uh, food to eat. I'm going to provide them money. And then he didn't want them to be uh, manipulated, perhaps by money that may be given to them. So no bread and no money in your purse. So they had the purse, but he didn't want them to take no money with them. And so what am I saying? He wants them to be out there totally relying on the power and the authority and the ability that he had just imparted into them. And he didn't want to rely on anything natural for their substance. He wants them to be out there raw, waiting on the leading of the Holy Spirit. And sometimes we get, you know, we, we study, we're supposed to, we get all this together. But I tell y'all all the time, sometimes, let's see. I tell y'all all the time, I don't know why I'm going this way because it's not on my paper. That is because the Holy Spirit, I give him charge when I pray that I got what I want to say, but you take control so that I can't rely on my own human ability to expound on the word of God, to study the word of God, and to exegete the word of God. He wants me to allow on the power of the Holy Spirit to give to you all what you need to get. Hallelujah, because he knows better than me what each individual person that's listening to me needs. And that's what he do. He attempts to get it to us. Okay, my time is winding down. Okay, you see, so I wanted y'all to see that they were sent out as represented and they were not sent out spiritually, uh, uh, spiritually bankrupt, just naturally. He gave them every spiritual tool that they needed to deal with these unclean spirits <laughs> and and you know we got to believe that all the natural was taken care of that's why the scripture says seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all the other things are going to be added to you hallelujah i'm talking about being an ambassador now let's look at luke 10 and 19 so he sent his disciples as his representative. That's all I was trying to say. How did he send them two by two? He didn't send them out individually. And it's, you know, there's times I said, Holy Spirit, what are you doing? 
where where is my evangelistic team? If if they not coming, I'm gonna go out there by myself. And he keeps telling, no, you aren't. He brings me back to the scripture. It's wise to take two by two. Why one pray, one watch. Man, he don't he don't give us to be ignorant. You go out there. You need if you're doing ministry, the devil likes it that you ain't covered, ain't got your back covered. You need at least two people out there. While while you praying, one is watching. And, and speaking in their heavenly language, warding off that evil spirit. So I'm talking to somebody, there must be to somebody, if you're trying to go out there doing it as a lonesome, it's not even the example that the Lord did. He sent his own disciples out two by two. Okay, anyway, let's go to Luke chapter number, <clears throat> chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing Come on, said nothing, and nothing by any means will be able to harm you. So as you're going out as his ambassador, as we say, you have diplomatic immunity. Hallelujah. Uh, you also have the almighty protection. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And there can nothing uh, evil come nigh your dwelling. He's giving you the power and authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions over all of the power of the devil. Nothing, nothing can be able to harm you when he sends you out there as his ambassador. You, you see that? We got to believe this. Sometimes the enemy scares us and that's why we don't go out to search. <laughs> Stop with that. Girl, God give us common sense. That's what we say. Y'all know we do. Come on. Somebody, I said it at one point, and, you, and I know you probably have. Well, God, I'm, getting, I'm not taking it down. No, you're not supposed to tempt the Lord. Oh, I'm just going to run out here in the street because the Lord said he give his angels charge concerning me. He said, the, he told Satan, Satan said, jump down. The Lord give yourself his angels charge concerning you to see the devil knows scriptures too. And the Lord said, yes, that's true. But the word also said that thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. So I'm not telling y'all to be crazy like that and go in places, neighborhoods and territories, something that you're going to take over. You ain't, you ain't even spiritually equipped. You ain't even have, you, you got on maybe one third of the armor and you are not ready to go out there. And the Lord hasn't told you to yet. And you go out there. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when he told you to go out there. And you go out there, can't nothing hurt you. Nothing, 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 nothing. Glory be to God. Amen. So now let's go to John 14 and 12. Very I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. So here he's saying, if you believe what I've just been doing all here in your presence, you believe that that was true, that was the working of the Lord. If you believe on that, he says, then, and that you believe on the Father, he says, then you're going to do greater works than these. Because my time on this earth is about to wind up. I'm going to my Father. But disciples, if you believe what I've done, then you're going to be able to do the same thing as my ambassadors. I'm sending you out there in that world. And you're going to be able to take this torch. That's why I refer to this often. So I want y'all to know the miracles, signs, and wonders were not just for Jesus' time. What he was doing was not just for his time. He gave us that same assignment. He gave us that same mandate. We're supposed to be doing the same thing. What's wrong? We got to hold up to the brand identity. This is part of the brand. You're supposed to be able to tread upon serpents and scorpions as we just read. And nothing can harm you. They can bite you, but they won't harm you. The poison can't, can't uh, affect your body. We're supposed to be able to believe in what he did so that we can do the same. This is what we're talking about. The brands, we got some work. We got to come up because this is how powerful we are. But we have not known that. that We have been become scared of the devil, scared to move out on what God told us to do because we don't want to be a target of the devil. Well, you his target automatically when you're a child of God. And by you staying complacent, all he's doing is saying, hey, we got them 
reserve. He 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 ain't gonna leave you alone. He just may not make it intense as the one who's on the front line, but he's still coming after you. Hallelujah, glory be to God. So rather do what you're supposed to do than to, than to take that weak stand because I don't want to be attacked by the enemy. And then he's going to beat you up because he, he knows that you are not aware of your identity. You are not aware of the power that's in you. Come on, somebody. That's, I'm going to read it out of the message. I don't know why my lighting is not good. It says, these work, the person who trusts me will not only do what I'm doing, but even greater things because I, on my way to the Father, am giving you the same work to do that I've been doing. You can count on it from now on. Whatever you request along the line of who I am and what I am doing, I'll do it. That's how the father would be seen for who he is in the son. I mean it. Whatever your request in this way is, I will do it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I'm going to leave it right there for it speaks for itself. The last scripture reference I believe I'm going to give you all. Hallelujah. And it's in Mark chapter number 16, verses 15 through 20. Mark 16. 15 through 20. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel unto every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe, for in my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and it if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. So then after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and set on the right, ah, set on the right hand of God. And hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Come on. Y'all listen, listen, listen. Ah. Oh, glory to God. Renew your mind with that. Renew it. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. He's done, y'all. It's our turn. Ambassadors, rise up. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm calling you ambassadors from the north, south, the east, and the west. Show up. Show up. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. If you believe and is baptized, this ain't to the fivefold, it's to anybody who would avail themselves to this truth. These signs will follow them that believe. They, in my name, not your name, that's what's wrong. Some people try to do stuff in their own name. They, the power of God has started working in some great people and he, will, he and they had that ability. They can heal, bam, deliverance, bam. They got full of themselves. And before you know it, they still think the power is there and they operate in their own flesh. And that's why the manifestation is not happening. That's why they got to do all these antics, pushing people down and coercing them to say that they got a miracle. No, miracles speak for themselves. But anyway, he said, they shall take up serpents. Even if we take up serpents, remember I said earlier, if they bite you, you won't be harmed. If we, if we, Even if we drink deadly things, it shall not hurt us. We're going to lay hands on the sick so that they can recover. God, please help us. We got some way to go. Because they've been teaching that healing is not for today. This, according to your word, I keep saying, I don't read that, that you said that. I read that Jesus healed and he wanted us to heal the sick. Glory to God. So I'm saying ambassadors, that's who we are. That's our brand identity. Let's own up to it. Let's represent him well. As the young people say, you need to represent. They're representing whatever group they are in, whatever class they, or club, or whatever they have come up with that they want to identify with. They are proud about it, pride about it. Hallelujah, you have a whole movement about it. And we are the only ones who seems like we are not proud about who we are 
and don't know really who we are standing so vocally and bold as every other group is standing up. Uh, I told y'all we the, we the most powerful ones if we would just stand up and have a voice and have um, uh, this, this power working and displaying through us. It's going to happen. Watch and see what I tell y'all. I'm going to end by giving you all this little excerpt. I got 12 minutes and that's enough time. I don't know how many of you have seen the movie. I taught this in my women's conference and it blessed the people. I don't know how many of them who are listening remember. So if this is old information for you, just bear with us. So the movie, The Lion King uh, by Disney uh, shows uh, Mufasa uh, who is the king of the jungle and it shows uh, that he's the leader of the land and all of nature and all of the other animals know he's the king of the forest and they bow and serve him the land is prosperous the animals are eating everything is fine um, Mufasa and his wife have a cub and they call him Simba and Simba is now being trained by his father to take on um, the to take that role when he leaves here, that he is his heir, and that he says, one day, Simba, this pride rock is going to be yours. You're going to rule it as my son. Things are going well, but just as things go well, everything has an enemy, an uh, adversary, an opponent. His own brother, um, Scar, is jealous that Mufasa was, was the one who was the eldest and chosen to be uh, head um, of the tribe because of by nature, you know, and he's more he has more the character of a leader than Scar. But Scar is jealous, so he takes the innocency of a little child and he sets up his brother to be killed. He has making, Scar has making allegiance with the hyenas, which are normally the lion's enemies. But Scar, because of his jealousy, goes and makes an army with the hyenas and befriend them, promising them that if they serve him, he will supply them with meat. Story short, so Scar makes this pact with them. Now, because of jealousy and anger of the authority that his brother carries. And when the child is born, he said, oh, the lineage of, the, of, of this is going to fall down to him. Where do that leave me? So now he starts to plot. He takes a little child, disobedience to his father, not to go so far beyond the borders until he's old enough. And he saw the child's curiosity and he used that. He says, I'm going to get him to go over there because he's angry with his father for disciplining him for going outside of the borders, him and the little young cub, the little girl that was his young cub. I can't remember her name. And so because the little child is mad now, Scar takes advantage of that and starts coercing the child. Your dad don't want you to see the things that he tells him about this wonderful land over there of uh, this 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 place that is prohibited from them to go because of curiosity of a child he knows that when he pitched this to him he's going to go be disobedient again and go out there and see because that was his nature of curiosity so scar sets it up that he would do that so that then he goes back to tell mufasa your child is in danger. He's he went into the to the uh the land that you prohibited him from, and Scar sets it up that uh, I think they was Willoughby's will start to run, which caused a stampede. And when this happens, um he got he set the baby up right in the middle where the stampede was coming. And so the dad now coming to rescue the son sees his son out there in the middle. And what do he do? He goes into the stampede as a good father would do to save his son.
Scar knows the possibility of Mufasa, who is the head of lion, is going to possibly be trampled and be hurt. He intended to kill him, which it did. Now he puts guilt on the child. It was your fault. When all alone, he was behind it all. So the child cries, see his father dead, and figures that he cannot go back. He knows his mother back there is going to miss him. But the, the, the options don't seem good. If I go back to my mother, I got to say, tell her it was my fault or disobeying dad that he died. I can't deal with that. So he runs away. And when he runs away, he runs off to somewhere far away from where he lives. And then he's at the cub. He's hungry. He doesn't really know how to fend for himself because he hasn't come into the, his attributes of being a, a ferocious lion yet, able to kill his food. So he's out there alone. He meets um, a wild pig and a, I forgot what uh, that other little thing was. But anyway, you all know what I'm talking about. It was the two animals. And they're out there and they only eat insects. So they teach him how to survive off of insects. At first he was like, yup. Then he gets used to it. They teach him now this song, Akuna Matata. And he said, what does that mean? Uh, no worries and no cares. They said, come live with us and live totally free uh, uh, with no worries and no cares. And then they say Akuna Matata. And then they, you see in the movie um, Simba maturing and growing up. And he's still out there with them too. Uh, Puma and I, forgot the, I can't remember the name. But anyway, uh, and they, they, they're they growing up and they see Simba growing up. And he's still singing the same song. No worries, worry, living worry-free. And he's just relaxed. That's almost like Moses was. Until one day, a lioness comes and the, the wild Puma's friends was first scared of him until they found out, oh, he's cool. And they became friends because lions was not supposed to be friends with them. So then here, this lions, and they get scared of her and they start calling for Simba. Simba comes to their defense and starts to fight with the lioness thinking that she's trying to eat them, find out that this was his friend that he was uh, went on the journey where they grew up together. And she re recognized Simba. And she, he said, Lila, I think her name was Lila. And she, and then they're glad and they get this reunion. We thought you were dead and your mother think you're dead. And they get happy. They have this moment of happiness until she stops and say, and realize, wait a minute, you're alive? And you've been out here, and then she starts to tell him how the how their the pride land has been destroyed, how Scar has taken over. He's taken all of the meat, and the people are hungry. Her, her mother is working hard. His mother is working hard, et cetera, et cetera. She says, "This is a blessing. We we you 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 we found you. Come on and go back and take your place." Because he's still the heir. He was like, "No, you don't know what I did." And she gets angry with him because he just will not go back. He wanted to sit comfortable. He didn't want to represent. He didn't want to take stake at who he was. He didn't want to be what he was born to be. And then it gets to the point that this little monkey is supposed to be magical. You all look over this part. We know some things in the movie we don't believe in. But Rafifi, Rafifi comes and says, I know your father. She, he, he tells him his father is dead. My father's dead. He said, no, he's not. He said, yes, he is. Uh, no, he isn't. And then he said, yes, he is dead. And the, the monkey said, no, he isn't. And he runs away. He said, come back here. What do you mean? He follows the monkey. And the monkey leads him to this body of water. And he said, your father is not dead. And then he hears his father's voice. And in the sky, he sees a uh, silhouette of something that looks like his father. And then he says, look into the water. He says, your father is not dead. He said, there he is. He said, where? 
He said, look in the water. He said, he, you're looking at him. He said, no, that's just my reflection. He said, look further. And he keeps on looking. And then he starts to see that he resembles his father. He looks just like his father. And as he comes to realize, oh, I get it. I represent my father. My father trained me and he lives in me. I'm in his image. I am his offspring. I look like him. I've been designed to rule like him. I should be his representative. And then when he, he does that, start thinking, he hears his voice of his father. And then he sees that silhouette in the sky. And his father says, Simba, you are my, you are my son. And he comes to tell him, he said, father, he calls to him, everything. He said, no. And he wants to take that low road, disqualifying himself, as I said to you all earlier. His father says, but you, Simba, you have forgotten who you are. You are my son. You, you are my son. And after his father talks to them, to him, the silhouette goes away. And he calls, don't leave, don't leave. But then he goes back to Lila and says, I know what I got to do. He comes now out of his comfort zone. He comes out of uh, his complacency, he comes out of being comfortable and relaxed, no worries and problem-free atmosphere. I'm just going to chill and die here. He, you wasn't called for that. And so he he steps up to the place, steps up to his identity, become the ambassador and king that he's supposed to be, goes back, and the rest is history. And his uh, his uncle is taking over. He realized his uncle told him, I'm the one that killed your father. He realized all these many years I've been running, you making me believe that I was responsible, making me believe that I was responsible for my father's death. That is that stronghold that the enemy puts in your mind. And he, he brings imagery, casting down imaginations. Imagine that you're going to fail. Imagine that it's not going to work. Imagining that I cannot lay hands on the sick. I cannot do these miracles. I cannot preach. I cannot be a person who's instrumental in, in setting the captives free. And all those imaginations go in your mind to uh, make you believe that you're not who God says you are. And until the Lord speaks to you, and that's what I'm doing today through his through my vocal cords to you, I'm saying to you, the Lord said, many of you have forgotten who you are. It's time for you to get back up on the wall. It's time for you to take your place in this world as his ambassador. It's time for you to realize that it is not time for you to sit in complacency and in the place of comfort where things are easy. Where you're about to go, some of the things are going to be challenging and hard, but you are well able. You were made for this. You were made in his image and in his likeness, just like Simba father told him. And so I use that movie to tell you how powerful you are. There is a Superman in you. There's a king in you. Uh, and it's ready to be released, man of God. It's ready to be released, woman of God. What are you doing sitting back eating a vegetable when you're supposed to be eating filet mignon. What are you doing accepting the harassment of the enemy when you're supposed to be putting them under your feet? What are you doing being uh, the, the tail when you're supposed to be the head? What are you doing just surviving when you're supposed to be an overcomer? You hear what I'm saying to you? And it's time for us to take our place in this world, show forth the light of Jesus Christ, and so that we can save these souls. And when he got back, that land that was uh, uh, was in poverty, stripped of its resources, no, almost no vegetation is left because of the hyenas and scar uh, eating up all and eating it, to, eating it for themselves, taking it for themselves. Simba came on, took his rightful place, and the rest is history. Everything begins to grow again. Cooperation was back into the pride. Uh, everybody was working, doing their roles. Not only was the, the species of the lions taken care of, but all the other animals was eating. Because when that happened, it wasn't just the lions that suffered. It was all of the animals. Because why? Nature was out of course. 
because somebody was taken over that shouldn't have. And I'm saying to you, child of God, the whole earth is out of course. The earnest expectation of the creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. No one can do it like we can. So rise up, rise up. Hallelujah. Show up. Hallelujah. Come on duty. Hallelujah. God has equipped you. He's ready for you, ambassador. He's giving you the highest ranking uh, uh, position. He's sending you on behalf of his government and he's got your back. And one of the things I wanted to read, they said, what does, um, the, what do the government provide anything for ambassadors and the life, the, and the lit, and the answer is yes. And the list is all inclusive. And I want to tell you what they supply. Everything almost. All my benefits on your job, they got it all. So what do they supply for them? Let me give, give me a minute. I, I'm trying to get my papers again. I had put them up because I thought it was done. <laughs> they the benefits they um uh, have is life insurance. Long-term care insurance, meaning when they get old, they're going to be taken care of until they leave here. Uh, they get paid uh, holidays. They get a, a salary determination. They get sick leave. They get student loans repayment. They give get another thrift saving plan. They get voluntary leave transfer program. Uh, they get their needs met, food, clothing, housing, and you name it. They get, they are escorted around in fine vehicles. Hallelujah. They are served by other important uh, people that is there as well on the same assignment. They support them. You see what I'm saying? God will undergird you. Don't worry. So I thank God for this lesson. Hallelujah. I salute you ambassadors. Hallelujah. I can't wait till we meet. Hallelujah. Not on the other side, but here doing the work of the Lord. We're going into these foreign lands and we're going to eradicate poverty. Just like Simba went back, got take his rightful place. The reason certain things are existing in the earth, I believe because the church ain't in this place. But when the church get in the place, hallelujah, the ships out on the ocean in the storm and the lighthouse is shining, they coming home. When the world is, is rottening and, and decaying, we as the salt is going to preserve it. Glory be to God. We're going to bring the flavor or the or the balance back to it. We're going to let them know what's proper, improper, what's right, and what's wrong, what's good and what's evil. Hallelujah. Next week, we're going to be talking about the church as soldiers and the church as judges in the earth. Glory be to God. Yes, I said it. Judges in the earth is in the Bible. Hallelujah. So I love all of you with the love of Jesus. Remember, I tell you that all the time that Pastor Betty so mean it, but the Lord loves you so much more and more than human love can come close to or compare with. I would dare not end this broadcast without opening up the enlistment. Hallelujah to the Lord's army. If you don't know the Lord today, hallelujah, you want to be one of his. You said, I want to join the Lord's side. Hallelujah. I always wanted to live life for a purpose and I see that God created me for a purpose and that was to serve him. I want to give my life to the Lord. And, and you said, what do I need to do? It is simple indeed. You could just go through this prayer. Hallelujah. Believe it, confess it. And that's it. You receive it and it's done. And you can be saved right now in a minute or less by simply repeating this prayer after me. If you're ready, let's go. Said, Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you admitting that I need a Savior. I am a sinner and I have sinned. I believe that you gave your son Jesus, who died on the cross for my sins and for the entire world, so that our sins could be forgiven. Thank you, Lord. For loving me so that you gave your son, I am calling upon you now, inviting you into my life to live your life in me. So today with my voice and with my mouth, I confess that Jesus is the son of God and that he died for my sins. But on the third day, he was risen from the dead and is now alive sitting at the right hand of the Father, even making intercession for me. 
by this confession of faith and my belief that Jesus is Lord and that my confession that I was a sinner that need to be saved. I believe now that I am saved. I thank you, Lord, for saving me. Now, Father, I know that you are Lord. I ask you to come and live your life in and through me. From this day forward, I make a confession that I belong to you. I ask you to come and fill me with the Holy Spirit so that I may live a life that is pleasing to you. I am now ready to follow you and I ask you to help me along this brand new way to be acquainted with you better and better each and every day. In your son's Jesus name, I pray. Amen, amen. If you said that prayer, woo, welcome ambassador. Welcome into uh, this holy nation. Hallelujah, you have now become an ambassador of Jesus Christ. You are what Second Peter says, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a peculiar people. People may not understand you now that you got a brand new life. That's okay. You are not here to please people. They'll get it later on. But now you have a brand new family, a brand new brand identity. You got a brand new identity. Hallelujah. God is going to change your image. You may have had the worst image ever, but through you living out this holy life, people are going to start seeing a different you. And you're going to be able to tell them that James that you saw yesterday is not the James today because I have given my life over to the Lord. It's nothing of myself. It's the power of God that Pastor Betty told me I have that is in me to give me this brand identity. I am now identify with the church. I am one of his today. And then all they're going to do is be inspectors. They're going to try to inspect your life. All you do is live as as much as you can by the word of God. It is a growth process. You may not know much now. Don't go back and feel condemned when you do something. Oh, I don't believe I'm saved again. No, get somebody who could uh, explain the scripture to you, who could uh, lead you, give you some instructions and help you to understand how to get up from there and keep on moving. Hallelujah. But you're one of his today. If you leave this earth in a minute from now, people, y'all are leaving this earth. I'm telling you so swiftly. Now, one minute you see them, the next minute people are putting their obituary up. I'm telling you, time is of the essence. If you you leave here the next minute, you could be for sure, 100%. If you said that prayer, believing in faith, Hallelujah. And you confessed it out of your heart that you will see the Lord in peace. Your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That that book that has every person's name that's going to get access to not just heaven, but eternal life. That means no more going back. No more redo over of this life. That means we're going to live eternally with our Lord. No more sorrow. No more pain. No more tears. No more anxiety, worry, stress. No more uh, bad relationship, no more evil, no more sickness, no more disease, no more inequality, discrimination. Isn't that wonderful? Don't that sound wonderful? Hallelujah. So reach out to us and let us know you got saved on this broadcast at KLCC1207 at yahoo.com. We want to keep a record of your uh, giving your life to the Lord and also a record of your visit, visiting our church, way of us measuring our uh, success in bringing souls to the kingdom. Do that for us. If you want to be a member, say that in the body of your letter, and then we will give you information of what you need to do to be a member. Whether you're saved for the very first time listening and you want to be a member, or a backslider who want to be a member, or just a regular church member who's been looking for a new church, and the Lord said, you know, you've been in that way, and you say, I'm looking for a new place or not you looking, but you feel that of the Holy Spirit that what you're getting at your church is not sufficient enough and you've been looking and why don't you try Kingdom Life? Send us an email also in the subject line. Either put a uh, backslider want to 
rededicate my life to the Lord and also want to be a member. And then just a believer who is looking for a church home want to be a member. And we will give you the information. We will love, love, love to have you. We are a growing church, a maturing church, but this is the environment. My mandate is to make this environment conducive for your growth. Hallelujah. Glory be to God, starting with the pulpit. Now, if you come and looking for everybody to be perfect and loving, you ain't going to find that. There is no perfect church. But you're supposed to come looking at the headship and supposed to come looking to see if that this uh, local assembly and this body is headed by someone who gives Jesus um, center focus and the word of God, the highest authority, and where the spirit of the Lord abides and where they're being fed, where they're growing. That's what you look for because you're as a tender plant. Now you got to get the tools to grow you. You got to get the water and the sun to grow a plant. So it come to full bloom and can stand on its own because its roots are strong. Your roots are not strong yet, and now you need to be discipled. And so we want to be instrumental. If you don't want to be part of this ministry, still send us that email that you got saved because we want to be instrumental in getting you to a, a full gospel Bible-believing church. Because every church that is open today, sadly to say, are not open in Jesus' name. And I have labored here with this word to get you saved and planted you. Hallelujah. And you and, and you got uh, a success to grow. But if you don't get watered and stuff right, it you won't grow or you'll grow up improperly. Hallelujah. You'll be premature. And so we don't want you to do that. And if you don't want to be a part of this ministry, we will reach out to our other uh, ministry colleagues who we believe in is of like precious faith and know is teaching the word of God and where you will grow at. And we'll try to help you get planted in a church if you don't have any type of connection. So with all my clear, hallelujah, I love you all. Whew. Glory be to God. I feel like I am bringing forth something. I don't know what it feel like to bring a baby. But boy, I'd be, whew, I'd be, I don't want to say exhausted. But yeah, it wears you out the virtue. As, as Jesus said, the virtue went out of me when that woman touched me. Why? Because she put a demand on the authority that was in here to heal her. Uh, when I bring the word, uh, I used to think those pastors, everybody did the same thing just because it was money. I said, why do every pastor take money off? What is that now? Another now, not another ritual they do? No, they need it all. Believe me. <laughs> we got to replenish ourselves. I love you so, so much. All of y'all, y'all know I love you. My queens out there, hallelujah. Y'all, I'm ready to see y'all again. It's time for our conference. Keep praying for me as we get in the directions for that. Hallelujah. We really want to take this uh, off site uh, for the next conference. We really do so that we can spend time with the Lord and rejuvenate at the same time. So thank God for all of you. This is Pastor Betty of Kingdom Life Christian Center on the Northwest side of Chicago, Illinois. And I'm a pastor who is teaching kingdom principles for kingdom living. Remember in this week, remember your identity. Remember that you are in the God class and remember that you are his ambassador sent out here in this earth and nothing, nothing can hurt you because you have kingdom diplomatic immunity. Be blessed, people of God, and go and dominate. And we'll have, have a fantabulous rest of the Sunday and a blessed week. And we'll talk to you on next week. Be blessed.